phone. Hello, good evening, good morning. Charlie Chaplin, may you rest in peace. We are live. <laughs> very special show. Very special show in the middle of September. And a lot of things happening in my life and Rose's life. And we took an hour today to meet with Alex Sternick, who um, Rose will introduce in more detail. I'm Dr. Tova Goldfein, and we are live at TMS Roundtable Global every Monday sometime in the day with my dearest, dearest professional partner and really best friend in life, Rose Hoy. Mwah! I love you in Melbourne, Australia, where the kangaroos, what a godly thing. The kangaroos have pockets for their children. I mean, think, is there a god? What, what a godly thing. Enough about me. Hi, Rose. Good morning everyone or good evening wherever you are in the world you know we spend a lot of time trying to work out what will help you our listeners to be aware that their chronic pain can be handled and that life's situations can also be handled now we found alex sternick or should i say tova did i can't own any I of think it he found me somewhere in the, in the... <laughs> right so now alex is a clinical nutritionist, but he's also a humor and life coach. Now, if you think about it, in the hospitals nowadays, we have we have actually doctors who dress up as clowns. We have people coming in to actually bring that serotonin to the, say those children who are having chemotherapy, for example, so that that humor, that laughter can actually happen with them in their suffering. We've, we've also um, see that once we tap into our humor and look at our pain and look at it in a humorous way rather than a frightening way, we can see that it's a dud to say the least. So Alex, thank you so much. I also want to mention that Alex is involved with a, a logo therapy, which has actually come from Viktor Frankl. Now, any of you listeners that have not heard of Viktor Frankl, remember that he wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He was in the concentration camp. He was watching people die around him, but he knew that if he could stay focused, he would survive. Now, he I've just written this down, so I have to read it for you, but it's The Will to Meaning. Life can have meaning in the most miserable of circumstances. And motivation for living comes from finding that meaning. So finding the meaning becomes the reason for living. So as we talk to Alex now, keep that in the back of your mind. Because many of you with somatic pain, chronic pain, have lost that life energy what would you call it vibe so welcome alex and tell us about yourself because this gentleman's been to india america switzerland germany everywhere i've been everywhere man <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i i come from a very traumatic family and background uh, physical illnesses as well as psychiatric illnesses all around. And I was an only child uh, raised in Jerusalem. My father was in, uh, sitting in a prison in Siberia before coming to Israel. So actually this childhood was very, very traumatic and gloomy doomy with a lot of trauma, with a lot of abusing illnesses and uh, too much serial seriousness as well, which my parents brought from Russia. So I, I really didn't laugh and I didn't express this joie de vivre in my life as a child. So I, I, I always looked for something different. That's why when I was 18 in the army, I already started to practice Tai Chi. And I went into Vipassana when I took a vacation from army. It was very strange because I looked for something more joyous and healthy. From my parents, I could understand that their way of taking medicines and going to doctors is, is not something that is not working out because they don't become healthier. So I look for something new. 
that's why I went to study nutrition in the Hebrew University. I was very interested about vitamins, about how to boost up our vital forces. But these nutrition studies were quite boring, I have to say. And uh, what happened is that uh, in 2003, I, I, I heard about the, the Father Teresa, the, the Jew, uh, Jewish medical doctor from New York who adopted many, many kids in Addis Abeba. He's a, a Jewish religious Orthodox uh, medical doctor. And uh, I, I, I met him in Jerusalem and he inspired me to come to Addis Abeba to look for a job. In to South where? Addis Abeba, Ethiopia. Ah. Wow. Yeah, he inspired me to come and look for a job as nutritionist so I can at least work and travel because I, I always like traveling. I was already in India before going to, to study. But on the way to Ethiopia, I really stopped in India, in Bangalore. That's and, a bit out of... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I went to Bangalore, then to Ethiopia, and I was sure I, I'm not going to back to be in Israel, to, to, to go back to Israel because I, I will be working in all these uh, uh, non-governmental organizations like Save the Children, etc. And, and bring a new, at least I don't like to be nutritionist, but I will be on field in the bush. But I, I think the, the Providence had a different plan for me. And in June 2003, I was, I was uh, going to buy some books in English because I saw an advertisement. There is a big discount on many English books in some shop in Bangalore. And I, I was roaming around and then my eye just, you know, catched a book. And on this book, oh, the, 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 the picture on the, the cover page was something like that. <sighs> I see many, many Indian faces doing like that. <sighs> yes. I said, wow, this is weird. What is that? So I, I took that book. And the name of the book was, I think, uh, something about laughter, laughter therapy. But I, I, yeah, I don't remember. It was very, very a long time ago. And it's, it was the book by Madan Kataria, the guy who started this laughter movement in the world and in India. And it was his first book where he describes what is laughter yoga, what is laughter therapy, what they do, how they laugh in the parks, et cetera, et cetera. So I took the book. I said, this is very, very strange, and it may happen only in India. So I bought the, this book, and all the rest just started for me. So I started there with the laughter clubs in India, with the local people. They were training me, training, training, training me. I was showing up every morning to a different <laughs> laughter club in different neighborhood in Bangalore and laughing with them. So I understood that there is something there. Oh, I feel much happier now very temporarily, but I felt it for that 30, 40 second minutes that I'm happier than I was before. And, Were you unhappy and before? Were you unhappy my very, before? I was very, very unhappy, the unhappiest, the most miserable person, but also the, the one who doesn't enjoy his misery. So because <laughs> of the traumas. What does that mean? You don't enjoy your misery? Well, my, my teacher, Anit Goodhart, said that if you're going to be miserable in your life, at least you might, you might learn how to enjoy it. But I was not, I was not there and not that. So, um, so uh, you're defying your misery. Very, very unhappy it. as a child, very unhappy family, very unhappy environment. My army time was very, very gloomy as well. I did things which I didn't like and I didn't have the courage uh, to say, I want to do that, not this. I was very submissive and obedient as, as a child and it was a lot of sicknesses. So now with this laughter yoga, me in India doing that, volunteering with the HIV patients, for me, I felt great at that time. I, I thought that's the end, but it was not the end. Anyway, I had this journey of one year and two months in India, volunteering uh, in HIV institutions, then going to Ethiopia, was I was accepted by Save the Children to be a nutritionist in the bush, in the field. I got a nice letter, but that I didn't get the, the job, which I was wishing for. So I went back to laughter again. Come back in the middle of the screen, Alex. Um, Mother, I, I, I used to stay in Mother Teresa Missionaries of Charity doing laughter yoga. With Did you meet ex. Mother Teresa? No, but I meet the Father Teresa. <laughs> 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 he's, he's she, was married. she was married? Say again. No. She, no, no. Continue. No, no. 
no, no. But I, I met him because of him. I went to Ethiopia, and in that in Ethiopia, I also met the world laughter champion Bella Chugimra, whom I brought to Israel seven years, six years later. So then I came back to Israel because for me to stay in Ethiopia, it was too much. I, 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 I didn't, I, 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 I saw I cannot be a nutritionist. I said, let me do something with laughter therapy. So I came back to Israel and started laughter clubs in Israel together with Dr. Ute Limant, one uh, German uh, woman who was living in Israel at the time. And we started this, um, the, this idea of laughter clubs and we brought Madan Kataria. But then, of course, things went deeper, and I started also to, uh, to how to say, to develop my own school, which was much different than laughter yoga. Laughter yoga for me was a gateway, and I started to understand that laughter is not enough for our happiness. I didn't want to admit it many years, but I understood that laughter. Laughter, laughter is a gateway, but then it's we a have gateway. It's totally not. It, laughter cannot make you happy, but laughter is a byproduct of you being contained and happy. It's okay. a byproduct. Could I, Alex, could I also um, move into uh, to breathing now? Do you think that um, laughter allows a person, especially someone in chronic pain? or surgery or anything like that intrusion in the body the laughter gives them that space that victor frankl space the laughter expands the time so that they can actually move in could you draw on that a little bit more because i think that's important yeah, yeah, for people yeah. to realize that yeah, yeah, laughter yeah. isn't just being funny yeah it's yeah, about yeah. creating yeah. that amazing yeah. space in yeah, the yeah. brain yeah, it's a very good question. Now, um, let's go back to laughter yoga, and we, I, I want I want to show what is the the what is the basis what is the foundation for laughter yoga. In laughter yoga, they say that when you fake laughter by body exercise, by movements, also if you are not feeling happy but you fake, you 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 can laugh. <laughs> You laugh and laugh and laugh, you become happier. The pain is gone because you produce natural painkillers and dolphins. You may produce some serotonin, you feel better, and you become happier. Now, this is the idea behind the, the fake it, fake it till you make it, which my teacher, Dr. Annette Godhart, wrote in her book in 1988. Laughter therapy, how to laugh on everything in your life, which is not really funny. This is what she uh, suggested. But later on, she changed it. And she said that it works only if there is no any anger or cry or, or something that, that is hidden. Because if you don't touch those, your fake, la la fake laughter yeah. will, li will, will be stained for, for, oh. for life. Now, like, now I want to come like to your the, question. Um, like, the body, to... like the unconscious mind knows the truth. Exactly. Now I want to come to your question. If there is a person, a sick person, which needs to uh, regenerate some natural painkillers, in that morning, if he is not depressed, if he is not traumatized by something, if he is not painful and his mood is medium and above, then you can do that. You feel, feel better. But if you are depressed and you don't come in touch with your depression and you want to run away to laughter, it will not help you. You're, you will yeah. not produce it's any. A it's maybe a band aid, if, if anything. However, if you voluntarily connect with your sadness, your pain, your misery, and you learn how to maximize it, how to capitalize it, how to draw a caricature around it. So you become the master of the ship, of this vessel. You become the captain. And then you create some kind of distance from the misery, the distance, and you accept yourself also while not being happy. And then you can laugh. Okay, laughter is a byproduct of you being happy. Laughter doesn't lead to real happiness. It's a byproduct. 
what leads to a real happiness it's acceptance it's purpose for living and meaning in life this will lead to happiness of course high level of serotonin of dopamine there are different other techniques how to regenerate them how to create them then when your mood is stabilized then you can do silly things you can take your tank out you can do faces whatever you want but you don't do it out of your own gloominess and uh, depression without you being in touch with your emotions now one definition of happiness will be when a person can move flexibly through all the emotions on the spectrum what is the meaning of the word emotion according to dr goodhart e is to exit or to moving out from one emotion to the next emotion so if you're flexible about moving out through emotions then you can be happy and the clown what about the clown archetype the clown clown archetype everybody we, we are telling about him the clown is always sad i would say the clown is authentic because the clown can be sad and can also can laugh but the clown doesn't ignore his sadness he he knows That's how right. to play with it and when you are authentic with your own emotions then you're happier that's why why the africans are so happy in west africa you go in in mali in burkina faso you will see happier people poorest country right but they are authentic with their emotions they cry they laugh they get angry they don't hide wow. So where, so where do we go wrong here in the way in the, where, should, where do we go wrong in in western society where did we, we go wrong we suppress. first of all we suppress we suppress this is this, this is john sarno's work you're talking john sarno's work this is the sarno method we suppress we hide we cover ah and also we fight because what happens with the depression and the post-trauma somebody some doctors will take pills what the pills do they suppress more right so yes. superficially the the the, the all these ciprolex i don't know the names of all these drugs they're like laugh like laughter la laughter by command or fake laughter wow. yes wow. but but you, you will you will you will carry on the, the sadness and the depression and the whatever the money depression or whatever if you don't if you don't make friendship with the depression and you say hey my depression i love you you're part of me let's make friends it will stay together but if you are become the master and you exaggerate and maximize and capitalize it it becomes a friend and that's victor frankel this is the paradoxical coaching this is the paradoxical intention when somebody came to frankel and told him you know doctor i'm afraid to speak of from speak in front of people in front of audience because I I'm afraid to stutter I'm afraid that that I, I I'm stuttering so Frankel told him go ahead tomorrow you go on stage and you imagine you are going to stutter so much and so much you, you are going to be you think you will be the champion of stuttering the world champion and he tried that and the stuttering stopped yeah because you don't you're not frightened of it he made a right yeah he does the opposite in homeopathy medicine is based on the same idea treat the same with the same similia similibus curentur instead of taking the antidote we take this we give some poison to the guy to the patient and the patient takes the poison it makes some some the stimulus makes the disease worse but then it's healing we are not fighting we, we want to give a full room to the negative it's like neuroplasticity it's like exposing it's, you to oh, the pain yeah. to the yeah. pain voluntarily to the yeah 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 you wow. make yeah. it bigger than it is this is about you this is about this is this is about the humor about humor drama that's the pillar behind humor drama i i take my pain or i take my shame narrative or the guilt narrative i talk about it but together with it i do some caricature about it you know when when a person comes in my in my training or one to one he talks about a story associated with shame or guilt so i take it, i give him this glass of water he gargles, he gargles he talks about the the story but, but all the water is going down it becomes messy he starts to laugh and then the, the trauma is disappearing yes you set a new you just disappear the trauma disappears yeah, yeah it becomes lighter the, the, the story lighter. Becomes becomes lighter. lighter now you accept yourself that you have this guilt okay i'm not saying guilt is good it's it's not good it's not serving us but at least you have to come closer to the guilty inside you 
You have to come closer to the shameful inside you. You have to closer to the painful inside you. And we're also to the violent inside you. This is the wisdom. This is the wisdom of trauma. The wisdom of trauma. Yeah, maybe. Gabor Mata, yeah, here it comes. In the end, we, we, it's, all, it's the same essence. Do the opposite that normal, normal therapist would do. Do the opposite that normal, normal coach would do. That's the idea of the paradoxical coaching. They just do the opposite. The others, yeah. they try to fix the patient. No, let's go on with him and being here. Let's walk in, into his shoes. I, I, I'm going to say, my, I have the same problem that you have. What's the problem? And then we can also stretch the time, you know. You know, my mentor, my, my, my mentor, uh, Michael, Dr. Michael Tietze, is a great psychotherapist trained by Viktor Frankl in Vienna in the 70s. Michael Tietze is the founder of Humor Care Germany and Austria. It's an association of uh, uh, medical clowns in mental health. It's not the clowns who make children laugh, not this one, but mental clowns in mental health. Medical clowns. Yeah, medical clowns. Mental, uh, medical clowns in mental, ha- in mental whatever, health. yeah, whatever, <laughs> messy. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so he, 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 he told him, he, he was writing one of his article that a person come to, came to him and told, told him, listen, I'm going to make a suicide because I, I'm coming to you. Nothing helped me. You didn't help me. All our therapy didn't help me. My, my, my relationship with my colleagues is so bad. With my wife, the relationship is so bad. I finished. I want just to, to, to commit suicide. So Michael told him, you know what? In your situation, you are right. After what I've, I've listened from you, you have the all rights to do that. But listen, I would like to ask you to come in one month. And if you come in one month, a bottle of brandy will be here on the table. We will sip. We will cheers, we will toss, and you are free to your way. But now in this month, I want you to do one thing. I want you to call to all the people who offended you, who abused you, who treated you bad, and tell them directly what you think of them. Now you, you have nothing to lose. You're going to anyway. That's to right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're you amazing. Tell them exactly <laughs> what you think of them. Because if you, if you take your life now, everybody will be laughing behind your back and they will say, this guy was, a fr- this guy was I don't know how to say, just, just you know, gave up his life. And if, but now, no, you, you come, you tell them what you think of them and then come to me. We will toast. I will have a good brandy here, lied on this table. Chin chin, and you're free to your way. He accepted him. He gave him one night. He wanted to stretch the time. So you know that what his patient did? He really called to all those people. He told him directly what he thought of them. And they, and they after, uh, on, the, on the same day, he was, he was bound to come to him and say goodbye to life. His, the, the, this patient's wife called to uh, Dr. Michael Tietze and told him, Doc, there is no need anymore in your services. Everything is done. Good. Yesterday we had a, we, we, we just uh, drank together a bottle of wine. We had a good sex. Everything just going well. There is no need anymore in your service. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's right. Because people that's are a paradox. Yeah yeah. 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 So, so if the, 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 when a therapist comes, walks into his, his client's shoes, he's not above him, he's with him on the same level. That's the pillar for paradox paradoxical therapy for provocative therapy that uh, Frank Ferry was a great social mm. worker, therapeutic social worker. So interesting place. because I'm, I'm taking this course on neuroplasticity and they're talking about um, counterintuitive pain. We think something is wrong, but chronic pain, it's a counterintuitive relationship. Nothing is wrong. Everything is okay. So it's, you have to become, you have to change the brain in the pathway to be a counterintuitive, to change your intuition. So that's a paradox. I think it's all coming together with the same, right? Where it's like nothing new under the sun when we're talking about what I do and what Alex does and what you do. Yeah. Well, I think unfortunately a lot of therapy is about avoiding the pain or clearing the pain or getting rid of the pain. But it's it's what Alex is talking about is getting in there and seeing what it's getting about. There voluntarily, play yes. with that. Wow. Change wow. the perception you have towards it. 
and accept yourself unconditionally <coughs> with the shame, with the guilt, with the rejection. You know, I, 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 I touch in my courses on, on a thing called non-destructive aggressiveness and creative anger. Say it again, creative anger, non write this down. Creative anger and non-destructive aggressiveness, which is affiliated to psychologist Bach. Creative anger and, and non-destructive non aggression. No, it's the same. Devin Lou, is the same. Not yes. to this uh, 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 aggression, which is not the non de not to destructive view. Yep. yep. Yes. No. <laughs> non destructive aggressiveness. Aggressiveness. Yes. yes. Is that more like Rose when you talk about um, discharging? Yeah. And no, and no, no. Discharging means that you're not actually you're not holding your anger. But non-destructive aggressiveness is talking about the aggression within us and exposing it so it's not hidden anymore. We Yes, and we are expressing the violence, yes. the anger, the judgment, whatever, much more capitalizing and maximizing it. And we use gibberish there. What is gibberish? That, language with no meaning we have we have a scene when the, where there is an interrogator and a suspect and the interrogator is trying in gibberish to let the inter, into the suspect to admit that he made the crime all in that is done in gibberish and when the interrogator i'm te i'm telling to the, the the suspect you you are not going to admit so so fast but then the interrogator gets angry and then he call an invisible uh, a character called Igor. Igor is a, is, a, is a Russian thug. He's not there. And when he calls Igor, the, the, the suspect is, is, is played by being beaten. Ah, 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 ah. Like you, you come closer to the place in you which is a beaten person. <coughs> with, with being punished and beaten voluntarily. So you accept yourself. And then he goes on the interrogator. He tries to, to let him to sign, sign the paper that you made a crime. And, and he doesn't want. And then he calls Boris. Boris is a bigger thug, is much stronger, has more muscles. And Boris beats him, invisible. Ah, 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 whatever, you know? And so in this, in this, in this installation, we want to give a full room to the aggression inside us, to the violence through humor, through gibberish, what gibberish does, because gibberish is a language and way of communication with no words. Wow. No, you cannot, you cannot use words from a language. So it's total meaningless. You can also say things which have no meaning because then you go into your right, right hemisphere of the brain. And where there is right hemisphere, <laughs> of the brain, there is space, there is meditation, there is freedom. And then your emotions can come naturally exposed, but in a harmless way. Yeah. When the problem, the problem is where the mental, where the meaningful and the emotion are mixed. Yes. Could I interrupt then, then now? Control. Yeah. And point out to our audience, point out to our audience, the gibberish is what little children use to one another. And oh, yeah. If you and if you think about it, the left brain isn't online. So we've only got the emotional part of our brain. And then we've got this swirling around in us. Now, I, I'm thinking that in that gibberish, I don't know because I haven't done it. But listening to Alex, I realized that gibberish could actually be the point where the patient actually had the trauma originally before they could actually verbalize it. And then this gibberish then actually opens up that space in them. Because, you know, we just talked about time before and how, how breathing gives us time or laughter gives us time, but our time in, our, on la in life is contained. So what happened to us when we were two is still affecting us right now when we're 22 or 42 or 62 or 82 right. it's all the same it's not involved in time it's all present in the present moment so this gibberish i realized listening to alex 
gives patients an idea of what actually needs to come up from their gut, from their gut. So when that you say child, the language without, me, without meaning, Rose, then what is then why is it helping us if it doesn't have meaning? It has meaning, but it's gibberish. The narrative, the story that we have been telling to ourselves since history and believing to the story like one absolute truth, this story which is, this, is, is, is destroying us, is harmful. This story is not there. The only the emotion is there. So when we express the emotion in its purest way, it's safe and it's yeah. catharted out of us. So the language without meaning can help us get to our emotions? Yes, that's why we do gibberish. We we have we have actually we have uh, playful exercises to couples. I divide the group in many couples, and I say to a couple, now you you play gibberish with fear, now gibberish with boredom, now gibberish with anger, now gibberish with rejection, now gibberish with dissatisfaction, etc., etc. And you learn how to express all of your hidden emotions that you never touched. Just play with emotions. Know your know your emotions. There, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it gibberish allows you to 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 express fully each emotions, but safe. You are not going to lose control because the narrative, the story, is, is not there now. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Could you talk about logos therapy as well? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. this logos therapy, there isn't any language in it. There's gibberish instead. So. Yeah. Nobody knows what is logotherapy, very few people. <laughs> well, I know people in South Africa have come. Oh, yeah, I know there is a big community. Because when, when, when mm -hmm. I gave a lecture in the Logotherapy Congress in Israel 2015, so many participants came from South Africa. I was surprised. <laughs> okay, in logotherapy, there are, you know, uh, my work <laughs> mostly uh, 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 linked with Frankel's uh, a philosophy called paradoxical intentions, wow. which is part of logotherapy. I, love this. Yes. I want to define two things and to see how they relate to gibberish. If we talk about logotherapy, the way to meaning, the way to meaning and, and how meaning, mean, meaning and purpose in life are related to happiness, according to Frankfel, uh, Fra Frankel, happiness cannot be pursued, happiness must ensue. This is what Frankel say. Happiness must ensue. So A E N S U E. I'm not English speaker. Everybody should know. I make wow. mistakes. Yeah. You're doing okay. You're doing okay. I'm not. I don't, I don't give a shit about being good English speaker because I speak gibberish. That that's the that's the most. Well, thank you for adapting to our to our show. Thank you for for dancing with our with our English language. <laughs> now now let, let's go for Frankel. Uh, if a person wants to find his meaning in life, you cannot find meaning by thinking too much, by going on, on left brain. What is my meaning? What is my meaning? I, as you think more about it, it goes far from you. The linear way, the conventional way, will be to think of your meaning. Think. They say think, but think is like think, you know, <laughs> think, think. It doesn't work out. No. However, sometimes when a person will go out of his country to travel in the Himalayas, disconnected from the internet and connecting with the internet, in this situation, when you think less, meaning can be channeled to you and revealed uh, to you from, I don't know, from where. So it's non-linear. It comes to you not by thinking, but by intuition. And then you know what is your unique personal meaning in life. Now, according to Frankel and to other life cultures, the general purpose of people is happiness. We, if we are happy, wow, this is our general purpose for living. But in order to get into happiness, happiness, there is a unique purpose for living that everybody should find if somebody is supposed is bound to be a carpenter be a carpenter otherwise you won't be happy somebody is supposed to be a lecturer like me be a lecturer otherwise you, you don't find your happiness somebody must be a farmer 
or a, a, a expert on permaculture and I, I have no I don't know nothing about permaculture but somebody this is his mission in life it will make him happy so through non-linear work when you go out of your brain out of thinking when you go on traveling and you go on a meditation you go on a monastery your a unique purpose for living must be revealed to you now if you follow it you will feel self-contained happy full but if you don't follow it and you 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 do something else and you go on a job where you feel not with a, you feel your your heart is shrunk and squeezed it will make you very miserable because you're always bound to thinking I need to work only where there is money so I can pay my bills. This is thinking, left brain. And then it makes you more uh, miserable. So here we see that in order to be happy, you, you must fulfill and follow your purpose for living, which is a unique purpose for living. And this will be revealed to you by your intuition. Intuition is non-linear, okay? You see, in other words... It's a paradoxical because when you you listen to your heart, you go on a paradox because the non-paradox is listening to your left brain. Second thing is about logo drama or paradoxical coaching. Viktor Frankl in his technique was advising people to exaggerate and maximize all the things which are they are afraid of that it, they will happen to them. For example, a person came to Frankel and told him, I'm afraid to talk in front of people because I am sweating and I'm so shy. shy. I have a big shame that people see that he's, it's wet here and it's wet here. How can I speak? So Frankel told him, tomorrow or the next day, you go on stage, you just imagine that you're going to spill five liters of water from the right arm and 10 liters of water from the left one just mark just aim to that wish for that and and then it solved his problem because he didn't have this fear of anticipation anymore so you see it's a paradoxical it's non-linear because the linear will be take a pill take pharmaceutics fight it or cover it Wow. It doesn't work out covering. Also with the cancer, I met a research. I met so many. I met not many. I met a few cancer people who were cured from cancer. And the common denominator to all of them was self-acceptance. They accepted their tumor as part of their body. That's why it's a friend. We don't want to fight our friend. <laughs> no, it's, it's an overgrowth of cells. Say again. Yes. It's an overgrowth of cells in the yes, body. I'm going, I'm going to grow up 1,000 tumors on my bread. Look at me. So the cancer yeah. stops, you know, it does, that is not proliferate anymore. The person wow. is at peace. With, yeah. With, with, yeah? You, you've moved it's away from what we were here. here. Gibberish helps because when, as you do more different gibberish exercises, you train your, your improvisational part in the brain, your intuitive part. You're listening to these fears. Fear, yeah. You know, fear, fear and narrative come from the left brain. Can we go back to the man's search for meaning yeah. again? Yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about finding our passion. Now, finding our passion is what's nonlinear. Sure. So would you just yeah. draw on that more? Because, you know, even if you've got to be an accountant and earn your money, you can also be i i don't know a lover of painting or do be an artist on your days off so your passion can come out of your gut can you talk about that because in a way sometimes we've got to earn money you know we've we got might. to pay the bill we've yeah. got to keep the roof over our heads. israel is okay. believe me israel is the most you know Toba is the most expensive country in the world it is so true what you say yeah but listen, so talk about talk about passion rather than you know, finding this hidden meaning because the meaning isn't hidden. It's actually in us and we know it if we take that pause to find out what our passion is. Would you just you know, re uh, revisit that for, for the sake of the patients? To, to, to do something what gives you passion and what enlights you, you must do it. Whether it gives you money, whether it do doesn't give you money. But if exactly. you go in a job and you do it many years, and every day you go 
to this job, to this workplace, you feel that your heart is shrunk. You don't want to be there, but you do it because you need to and you must and you have to. These three, we, we call it in, in Hebrew, in, in Hebrew, uh, maybe you can translate, there is a word called chametz. Chametz is the thing that you cannot eat in the Passover. It's the bread, chametz. Chametz. And the rashet, how to say it over rashet tevot? This chametz means, in, I don't know in English, the chametz means in Hebrew, you have to, you need to, you must. In Hebrew, chayav muchrach tzarich. And we don't want to do things that we are, have to do them because of fear, because of something will happen. So we, we want to choose freedom of choice. We don't do things that because we have to do them. Because if we have to do them and we do them and we feel shrunk heart, squeeze heart, so, small that's, heart. That's about being angry. The heart doesn't agree. The heart really and, doesn't want, but I, I don't listen to my heart. I still do that. Then I, I, can, I, I can develop any illness. This is, the, uh, this is disease. This is, I can develop that sooner or later i so I, I don't say that you every everything you 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 do for money to pay your bills must be your your uh, i don't know celestial purpose for living no but it is something where you feel wow i feel good there and if you don't feel good go to other place abundance yes. dance with your bands abundance dance ab abundance Shepard. dance with your bands and and you know, uh, emergency people people act out of emergency right emergency but what is this emergency there is another side emerge and see yeah take a distance create a gap victor Frankl create a gap and see from above what are the possibilities this That's is laughter right. this is the deepest essence of laughter laughter is to take a gap take a distance from yeah, you cannot. Also, when you do physical laughter, <laughs> I cannot sing and laugh together. And you know That's why? Right. <laughs> you know why? Because this muscle and this muscle down the the eyes is uh, is yeah. activated, and you cannot sing. You you try you try to you try to think about many things about problems and do like that. <sighs> you cannot sing when you when you distort your face. Okay. Wow. We need we need to close the, the mind. And there are different Rose, we have, to... I sit in the eyes. I sit in the eyes. I cannot think about my problem. I do my jog and I cannot sit about think about think about my problems. When I, I right. when I read enough, I cannot do when I do gibberish meditation or gibber, I cannot. And and, and when I, 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 I when I increase my, my uh, fa uh, pace, the rhythmus. So there is less chance that thoughts will intrude my, my left brain, left hemisphere. Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Amazing. And he learned this in India, where everyone does meditation. Say again. And yet, well, you you learned this in India with yoga, laughter. No, no and laughter yet yoga starts from India. I learned it in India, in Bangalore, yeah. Yeah. And yet, when people go to India, they go to meditate, like, you know, to sit quietly like the buddha yeah uh you know with this i have some doubts because i think and it's like also what wim hof says the tumor of breathing the the breathing of the tibetans because wim hof developed his breathings based on tibetan uh breathing oh, really the wow. yoga the hatha yoga which comes from india is good for the indians we need to in the west we are more in stress we need to adjust things from the East towards what we are able to do. And what I appreciate about Wim Hof that he took that Tibetan tumor breathing and he fitted it, adjusted it to the West. So it will be easier. We, 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 I don't say we need, we, I don't, that's why I don't think that yoga or especially meditations, hardcore meditations like Vipassana where we sit 10 hours a day, 11 days, and, mm -hmm. and there is like self-punishment in a way, it's for everybody. So I have a question. Look at Rose. Look at Rose. Yeah. Eh? What, what, what is well, my question you? is like, what if someone has back pain or migraine headaches or chronic pain and they're, you know, they're, they're on their journey and they came to you and said, what can you do to help me help myself 
with chronic pain or migraines or an or autoimmune disease, what would you suggest? How would you encourage? Yeah, I, 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 I would go first on uh, uh, accepting the pain and playing with this pain through the techniques I know, like humor, drama and paradoxical coaching or psychotherapy meets clowning. We will do the, we will go directly and play and embrace and exaggerate and maximize this pain to make this pain not an enemy anymore, but it's part of us. The second thing, yes, of course, we, we if we can alleviate it, why not? If we can do breathing exercises, we can go and sit in the ice ice bath, which will alleviate the pain, why not? But yeah, the last, a different pain. The last, yeah, the last thing I will say, you have to, to hide your pain because you know what people do in Israel when they have pain? And it's the worst, they take marijuana and it's the worst thing because you drag it. You drag it. It will stay longer and longer. You don't want to, you don't want to face it. And I want to face it and play with it and even enjoy it. Let's talk marijuana, about... Um, marijuana is a big problem in Israel. It's the biggest problem, this drug. Yeah, because, let's talk about Wilm Hoff because Wilm yeah, Hoff is, is taking, he's, he's helping people. And if it's something we can do, we can talk about simply, what is he doing? What is the ice baths doing? Causing pain, like Rose said, so their other pain goes away? Is that what you thought, Rose? Is that what yes. the ice bath is doing? Well, have you I have you ever had a cold shower? <laughs> I'm, sitting, I'm, I'm sitting eight minutes a day in the ice bath twice a week. Are you How in I, pain, Alex? Are you in pain? Wait, good question. Now, now, what happens is like this. First of all, we do the breathing exercises of Wim Hof. <clears throat> and the breathing exercises, what they do, they will uh, do some manipulation on these trimers, these patients <laughs> in the body, and they will become monomers. And we, usually when you go into the, the very cold uh, water, you won't feel uh, cold, you will feel pain. Okay. But after breathing, it's because you have more oxygen and you have more dopamine and more serotonin and this these pain receptors are changed by their form, you don't feel the pain or you feel it very little. Now, what happens, it's, it's like what happens with the runner paradox. It's, you, 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 go on your, you go at your wheel to this cold, you sit there, the first 90 or 100 seconds is horrible. It's difficult. You, you, it's very difficult to breathe, you know, but, but now, now, if you don't, if you don't go to your thing, <laughs> it's stressing the cold. But you, you, you shift your awareness to the to the wisdom of body, only to the to the touch of the the body with water. You can pass through this hundred seconds. The sensation, the sensation. Yes, but you pass. In the, so the first <laughs> hundred seconds or two minutes are hard. It's the the, the trauma. It's the emergency. But after hundred seconds. You can sit like that and you can breathe and you can stay another 20 minutes because you pass through this critical time. Yeah. It's a paradox because if we think linearly, if we think conventionally, we should feel worse and worse and worse as we are in this coldest water. But the reality is that after you bypass these first two minutes, you adjust to. And then it's not cold anymore. You even feel that your body radiates some warm way to the to the water it and you can stay more you. and more and more it's the same with the runner paradox the runners is running after two kilometers it's very difficult after three kilometers it's difficult but if he passes the five kilometer we can run forever he's not tired anymore it's the same you see how much the we have a paradox in life because we we, we it's walk like, on uh, tony robbins walking on hot coals it's okay. not the same it's not the same because here you really you know when you sit in the ice water you have the whole body work out you don't need to go to the gym cardiovascular system all the arteries are become wow. big more oxygen to the to the brain yeah it's it's mm -hmm. the whole body workout and and you can you can even intervene into the autonomous nervous system with this Wim Hof changed the medical schools and this what guy was about that he says that we have, we can intrude <laughs> the brain, the, 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 the immune system, the bone marrow. We, 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 can, we can voluntarily to, to generate white blood cells. 
endocannabinoids, serotonin, dopamine, without taking anything externally. So everything is in our body, in our vessel, in our, this is the laboratory. With the breathings, with the cold water, with the cold shower. We, we are the pharmacists. <laughs> and okay, it, it people, change. And okay, everything. Alex, people don't necessarily have a, a ice cold bath, but they can actually water. Step, step into the cold shower, do their breathing beforehand, so that they're, they're, <laughs> they're um, what would you call it, um, able to go through that few, few moments. And then, as you say, the water then becomes refreshing in a way because it opens up the circulation. So anyone in chronic pain, it's a very good uh, um, way of dealing with the pain because you're actually moving into the pain in a different wow. way and wow. you're in control because the exactly. chronic pain is exactly. sort of out of control. Yeah. But you're actually breathing first, breathing to, to set yourself up. It's like jumping over a, a precipice, but you know you can do it, even if it's a deep precipice. And then in that breathing, go into the cold water, cold, and just breathe through it. Yes. You'll hold your breath. Yes. Yes. But once yes. you're used to it, you just breathe normally, and it becomes a really calming yes. effect. Wow. Yes. And, and, and also Wim Hof says that in the beginning, you just take a hot shower, and then before you dry yourself, take 15 seconds cold. The next day, 20 seconds, and little by little. And I'm yep. talking yep. about yep. 18 degrees water or 16 degrees water, cold enough to have the effect. And then you feel so much, ha you feel happy after. You, can, you know, the sky is not the limit anymore after a cold yeah. shower. Well, if you've ever been into the in the third world, well, you have a cold shower because it's the only thing you've got. So in India, in India, if I want to have a cold shower, I cannot. It's so warm there. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, I I I'm a person who is very sensitive to the cold. For me, the winters in Israel are horrible. People will argue with me. I like warm uh, climate. But in the cold, I find my stillness, the happiness, the meditation. You know, when I tried Vipassana of Gwenka, it didn't work out for me. I had more thoughts. I think too much. That's why I do gibberish. Think and think, yes? Think and think. You have to do Vipassana on your own instead of in the big hall. <laughs> but when I go in the cold shower, I'm sorry, not the cold, ice bath. Uh, you can do gibberish. But I can, I can do, I do gibberish inside the ice bath. What do you think? Of course. <laughs> Usually I sing. I sing in gibberish. I sing. Seems a bit but I, I learned, I learned how to come closer to your pain, how to be friend with your pain, how to meet it. And when you go there voluntarily, and I think that's the essence of this interview, when we go voluntarily to our pain, we want to meet you. Let's meet. Let's play. Little by little, it's losing the power upon us. It becomes a friend. And when it's a friend, it's less painful. Okay? But when we fight the pain, it becomes bigger and bigger. Mm. And when we cover it up with different yeah. pills or with marijuana, or with, it becomes bigger, but it's hidden. It grows. Yeah. Alex, can we... Tom has got this lovely thing up here. We fear death because we don't understand the purpose of this life. Now, I haven't asked you, I haven't prepared you for this, so it may not be what you we could talk about. But I'd like to talk about the, the not the understanding of the purpose of life, but a bigger purpose, like the sense of God. Could you do something about that in, in this yeah. conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah, that's question. our umbrella for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it took me many years to realize through different uh, spiritual studies that I thought that I, we reali I realized that actually everything which happens to us, it's not happening to us, it's happening for us. And there is like higher providence, which always wants our benefit and our goodness. 
sometimes okay, we are okay, the ones sure. who disturb yeah. the providence to lead us to where we're bound to be. And that's where there is a full trust and, uh, and less anxiety because I know also when like bad things happen, they happen for us so we can learn the lesson and go higher. The providence is always for us. Sometimes we are the ones who disturb and we fight. Do you think that that's based on fear? Do you think that we can't accept the the um, the things that are going wrong because of the fear of of what? Yeah, it can be. It can be because of the fear. Because if something doesn't fit in with our welt anschauen, with our way of living, how we see the world, and there is a surprises of life, we are not prepared to deal with any surprises. We plan it for that. So, yeah. and, and then we fight it. We, we don't agree. It also happens ha ha happening to me sometimes. We, yes, but if we agree, we know it's happening for us. And when we, we are happening, it's happening for us, we stop fighting, then it will lead us to higher. So it's a relationship. It's another it has, relationship. It's, it yeah. is a relationship. Yeah. The, the providence is always taking care of us. But it wants us to learn some lessons that we need to learn. I think, I think in, yeah. in a way now, can I loop back to Viktor Frankl? Viktor Frankl was on, <clears throat> had just written the paper and he was to present to the psychiatric um, convention or whatever it's called when the Anschluss happened <clears throat> and he had his papers in his hands when the when the um, army or whoever came and took him so he had a plan in his life and it was all taken from him <clears throat> so his paper was never published and he was never able to present that paper so he's carted off to a concentration camp and there all his life's expectations are gone, everything. I've got a feeling he lost his whole family as well. I can't remember his story. So, but in that moment of everything going wrong, he actually reached up to that higher power and saw, I don't know how to explain it, but he saw that will to meaning happen within him. And I, can you just talk a little bit about that, that everything's taken from you? but then you get everything back, the paradox of it all. Yeah, I remember this quote of, uh, there is one quote of Frankl that uh, you still have the freedom of choice to choose how you react, also if everything is taken from you, something like that. This is about freedom of choice. Also, when you lose everything, you have this freedom how to react, because if you know, if you if you can anticipate that there is something which is waiting for you in the future, or there is some mission that you may complete in the future, maybe some lover you are bound to meet, it will give you this vital force to keep on. Also, if your past is gone, you know, you're, you lost everything. It's still with you, actually. You cannot lose it. It's, it's, That's right. It's still there. Could, you know, He's talking about that. You, it, uh, everything which you have done in your chip, it, you always scary. Even it looks like that you lost it. But he tells that if there is something in the future which is waiting for you, and you are the only one, you see, unique purpose. You are the only one who can do this job. You are the only one who can write this book. You are and the only even if even if it's your death that's going to happen, that's your job as well. Even if it's your death. We were talking about dying and not knowing the purpose of life, but maybe our purpose in life could be dying, couldn't it? And going to the higher consciousness. You know, Anita Murjani, Anita Murjani is always telling that uh, to go going to the other realms, it's not a problem. Why we too too much dramatize? Yes, yeah, that's fear. <laughs> uh, Tava, could you? She has been there. She came back. She knows. Yeah. Could you just write this little saying down mm -hmm. for everyone? Iron, iron, I R O A, I R O A, O N, iron. Sorry, my accent. Iron bars do not a prison make. Do not a prison, a prison make. Make. So wait. Yes. Say it again. Iron bars do not a prison make. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's what Alex is talking about in that search for meaning. 
even within the iron bars, you can be, you can have actually be non-sensory. You know, this is what um, uh, uh, regimes do to people. They put them in solitary confinement. But if they have got that attitude about themselves, they won't be broken. So wow. I, because I don't know I, if, can... if we understand that our existence is not conditioned to the external things happening to us and our exactly. is always is yeah. there yeah so we don't so, care about what's okay. happening so how do we translate yeah. hmm? so how do we translate this lovely conversation for a, a, an in-depth feeling of purposefulness when people have got chronic pain you know they're in a wheelchair you know that purposefulness you know, do we do we accept the wheelchair? What do we do? You know, they're on, on crutches and they've got the chronic ankle pain or something and they're always on crutches. You know, a, a wheelchair, it's something else because uh, for many people, when it's a wheelchair, it's for life. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it can be. And I, I, you know, if 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 I, it was me, I, I would try to look for non-conventional solutions to go out from this wheelchair. But first, you have to accept it. I heard of people that were on the wheelchair, oh, yeah, and because they didn't listen to the to what the doctors told him that it's for life, they say, okay. He, he can tell me what he wants, but I don't accept it. I, I think for me, I can try to go, to stand. And they try different techniques. They went to this B venom therapy, you know? B venom therapy. Yeah. And they sat. B, B venom to bring to get rid of the inflammation. Epi, epi, epi therapy. Yes. Yeah. And, and the bees were stinking them all over the body and in the spine. And then they could walk. They went from the wheelchair. Right. Okay, so I don't say you have to, you have, I mean, first of all, acceptance of the situation as it's now, that's good. We don't yes. want to fight. And but responsibility that you, you brought yourself here and you can bring yourself out. And you can bring yourself out. I, I, I you know, in, in my trainings, I always write on this white board, the board, the, the word impossible, impossible. And I say, you decide whether it's impossible or I am possible. Which <laughs> can you can, Tyler, can you write that I down in the comments? Impossible. Yeah. I am possible. Yeah. Can and, you? And because we think about things impossible, it's really li limited. Li limits us. It makes yeah, us okay. boundaries. Okay. Yeah. Write it. Write it down for 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 the for the audience. And, 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 and it's a real essence of laughter. Laughter is not only do laughter exercises and ho ho he he ha ha he he hu hu, but it's it's to take this to go beyond this space to go you know go Impossible beyond. Impossible is oh. a label is a thought. It's not true. Yeah, yeah. Go beyond the thinking. Go go beyond emerge and see. Then you can laugh. It's <laughs> it's you laugh because you go beyond the power. I'm gonna be devil's advocate. No, you can't. I can't laugh. I'm in pain, Alex. I'm in pain. It hurts. It's not. I'm funny. talking about metaphorical laughter, not laugh, not physical laughter, but how, how you what you change in your belief system, the sistema di credenza. What you change here if you move from impossible to I am possible. The so sky is not the limit. If Wim Hof could sit 63 minutes in this ice bath and he, 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 he was running 40 kilometers in the Kalahari desert with no drinking. So, so I maybe I can learn from one, one case of success that is possible also for me if I wish to break this old paradigm of perception. The, 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 the perception, the paradigm, the thought that we have been uh, uh, learning from our teachers, from our uh, schools from from our parents from government if this we take and we throw it to the garbage and we set and use belief system that's I am right. possible yeah, this is laughter this is for me laughter not ho ho ha ha he 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 this is okay this is okay this is the beginning but the real essence of laughter is to take the old belief system to see what is not serving us anymore say thank you honestly uh, humbly you you served me so far 
I believed in this belief system. Now let's adopt a new one. Let's do the opposite one. Yeah. Impossible. Everything is possible. Let's try. If it's not working out, let's let's move on. But we give a try to a new belief system. As paradoxical as it can be, why not? In in the worst case, we are going to succeed. Come on. In the worst case. Alex, I'm so happy we like Alex and I've been trying to connect for a long time off and on. Um I I'm so happy you came on the show, and I'm going to uh, so have you on the you Hebrew much. show in November, December, when we go live, live. Mm. But what an amazing gateway to be with Rose and I. And Thank Rose so and much. I will never, Rose and I will never be the same. I don't think Rose and I will ever be the same after this show. Uh -huh. This show has been a turning point. It's been a pivot, <laughs> a pivotal turning point into what we're doing and we know we're in the right place. And Rose has quite amazing experiences in her work, being a midwife and a doula and being in the being in a surgery room with sick people and I'm meeting wow. people. Wow. Wow. I'm just I'm inspired and I, I have more and more hope to be the, you know a better um, health practitioner to my clients and to my own personal life and my own personal falling and getting up and falling and hitting my nose and falling and getting a bloody nose and getting up and I know you know Rose uh will have her own what going. Is we just need to keep going whatever it is yeah 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 to follow our hearts the intuition to go always with the intuition because the intuition doesn't lie at all wow it's yeah. always about truth we're but on a pilgrimage aren't we yeah 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 if the intuition yeah. goes you Quit from this job, quit with the job, but do it proudly, courageously, and something wow. you will find something better. Wow. Because all exactly. this evidence is for us, is working always for us. We have to yeah. remember it every day. Yeah, because we you're right. This is this it's is paradoxical. This. It's paradoxical, yeah. yeah. Right. Because the linear is to be in fear, to be right. submissive, obedient. Doctor, you cure me. You are the only one to cure me. Doctor, what's wrong with my body? That's the linear. Do the opposite. I can wow. cure myself. Why not? Wow. I'm exactly. Doctor is resides within, isn't it? Wow. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. We, we can invite Alex on. If you want, we'll invite him on to meet Michael Galinsky. So have you seen all the rage? The movie about Dr. John Sarno. Did I send you the movie send All me. the Rage? Send me. I will send you the link. It's a wonderful movie about Dr. Sarno, where how Rose and I met. And um, really, uh, I'm sure you'd have a something wonderful to say about it. so we will meet again um please let's do virtually let's do. or in person and um i mean really uh, well, right? <laughs> i just want to say that uh next year i i probably will have some master classes in europe in italy in switzerland in denmark somebody's interested in, what, in english in english oh, yeah in english in english in you're some speaking, countries with translation, but I'm you're speaking, speaking beautifully. You're speaking beautifully. And maybe you want to connect to Australia and, and I wish so far. So, so far, I tried with Mer Merv Neal, the guy of laughter yoga in Australia. It was quite hard with him. I tried, but I came. Yeah, I already came to Canada. I gave a training in Montreal. Wow. So it's yeah, mm -hmm. it was far. I traveled. I, I met Gabor Mate. I, I, I went to the Congress with Gabor in um, at McGill University. I gave wow. my 15 minutes uh, work here a uh, lecture about war, my work. You and did? Gabor, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In at McGill University, yeah, in Manuel. Wow. Amazing. It's really beautiful. Three I'm, years I'm, ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. Really yeah. Happy. I'm very <laughs> happy with that. Did you Alex, did you give them a uh, um a, an example? Uh, it, 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 they gave me only 15 minutes presentation. I had to squeeze. Sure. But give us an it, example now before we go. Example of what? Gibberish, of what? laughter. Ah, okay, okay let, let's, do, let's do some gibberish. Okay. Right. So, so you've got to train us so that yeah, we yeah. know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are many people who are so, we were talking a lot about fear here, anxiety. So there are many people mm -hmm. that have anxiety over gibberish. So be, mm -hmm. because they, they are so anxious and fearful to see themselves uh, speaking in a silly language, language with no meaning, so they always mumble with the same word. So their gibberish doesn't 
sound like gibberish. It's always like like that like childish gibberish and what i want usually to, to do is to teach people how to speak gibberish very slowly each word is different in a this manner that if you speak it in the street other people will try to guess which language you speak from the for one of the languages they never guess they will they will they will suggest oh, german finnish swedish danish French, but they never will say gibberish because your gibberish is very authentic. Now, if you if you learn how to to do it slowly, how to act out of slowness, how and to enjoy in being slow and not hurrying <coughs> up to get things done, then your gibberish will be authentic. So I'm going to ask you a question. And you answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Tova and Uxefer Exensis Naxevorifine Praxirx. Jede Fraxe wird die Taxe für Hitze verkraut, wird gefiert, ob es der Coronavirus in der Nase wird. Das ist für die Sache. Ob es bald geht. Ich nehme es gemeinsam. Ah, she cannot answer in gibberish. You see, it was hard. I agree. That no, you're not answering gibberish. I'm feeling anxious, so. Uh, you see, ah. Was kann man das sagen? Like, like, not da, uh, quite. What is it? I don't I'm kind of what does that do? Rose, it is not suffice. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this one, yeah, it's difficult for you, yeah. But, but now let's okay, so, so because people have this manner, so I say, okay, in the beginning, I will say a word you do follow the leader, okay, that would be good. Okay, right. let's let's repeat after me. Brook spra. Brook spra. Brook is brick. Brook is brick. Shagur brexo. Shagur brexo. Brackin print. Brackin print. Brackin smixed. Brackin spread. Shdako next to me. Shdako next. Shdako next. Brick spra. Brick spra. And now we try to speak again. Alte Fruch Semper for Kölner Fröste, bitte. Fütter. Fari Fere Kämmer Wörste. Frate Vernunst über Kunst. Du kannst freie Wöhne in der Fraxe für uns ist die International Airport, die der Fsiki für Australia. Jeder Fruch ist wirklich ein Mediziner, der kann Pröste fahren für uns. You see, I do it very seriously it means that i give full room to my seriousness i don't try to cover up to run away to laughter i want to meet my seriousness courageously at will wow. but in the end i mix it with gibberish it becomes wow. comic wow it sounded like a blessing didn't it tova a a little little bit. Bit. speaking in tongues in the stack severa for steak so your frequency for absurdistan is calling <laughs> We will meet again. I, I would really, I really, I'm a little, I'm a little uncomfortable, a little triggered, but I'm, I'm liking it. It's a good trigger. <laughs> may, may the farce be with us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for blessing our studio. Thank you so yeah. much. Yalla. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy, bye. enjoy, enjoy. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you to so the audience. Bye bye. Enjoy bye, everyone.